I guess this topic is quite sensitive. I guess. I'm not really promoting plastic surgery. Why the fuck you lying? Yeah, I'm kind of promoting the place I didn't do it at, but getting it, not necessarily. I trust that if you're an adult, you have the, I guess, mental capacity to be able to make these sort of decisions, whether you want to get them or not. And if you are younger and more influential, parental advisory, I guess. As with all things that have to do with things like plastic surgery, um, do whatever you fucking want to do with your body. It's what I do. And I'm quite happy with it. So this is more of like an educational sort of thing because I know there's a lot of people on my channel that are curious about this. And it's one of those things that I get a lot of messages about um, when people come to Korea because there are some people that do come to Korea to get things like this done. So today I'm going to talk about kind of my experience with fillers and uh, things of that nature. I've been getting injectables, I guess you want to call them, um, since... Oh, did you like my... Uh... I literally went out and bought sweaters for these sorts of videos because one it's winter and i need warmer things and also i feel like i'm always just wearing that white t-shirt and that's like my whole what i normally wear but i was trying to give you a kind of like ariana grande like moment with like the sweater yeah anyway it almost seems like whenever you talk about things related to other than plastic surgery and changing your body or whatever all of it has to do with maybe like removing fat from the body and things and creating like maybe a slimmer line or like in america they love like the very when it comes to like makeup at least whenever you're like contouring and things you're just trying to get like more angular features, but for me, I'm, I'm more interested because I'm very skinny. Um, I'm more interested in adding more volume to my face. When I was introduced to the world of fillers, it was a whole new world for me. Again, I don't want anyone thinking that they need fillers, but as with all things, um, as long as you do them in moderation, um, I think it should be fine. And as long as you're not fucking hurting anyone else, right? Uh, so far, I've pretty much gotten fillers in every part of my face that you can think of. Um, I do always try to make it a point to make sure it's as natural as possible, save for some occasions. <laughs> But uh, basically, fillers are kind of just like injectable liquids that I, I don't want to go through the whole science of it. But basically, it's the stuff they inject in your face. It creates volume or structure wherever you place it in the face. I've got it done in my nose, um, under my eyes, here like on my smile lines, my chin, and my cheeks. And I'm going to kind of go through my experience with each one. Um, with my nose, my biggest issue with my nose before I had gotten my nose surgery, um, which if you haven't seen, you're curious, I'll link it up here, my uh, nose job. It wasn't so much that my nose is flat because I know a lot of maybe Koreans um, that do get fillers usually get it here because their bridge right here isn't very high so they get it here to create that sort of higher nose bridge for me it wasn't i didn't really have that issue this has always been a little bit higher for me uh but i think what it was is because my nose was quite flat obviously i already got nose surgery so um it's a lot higher now but before it was a little bit flatter and they kind of placed it uh here at the base and kind of a little bit at the tip to kind of help the tip obviously to make it more pointy and at the base to kind of push out the nose a little bit more and that was kind of like my first experience with fillers oh and he, he did put a he did inject a little bit along here to again kind of give me a lifted nose it's not the same thing as surgery um i also had a quite wide nose so i used surgery to fix that but with fillers it did give me a temporary sort of like a little enhancement to my nose i guess because with fillers you're adding to your face you're not taking you can't take away from your face was it painful mm, whatever you get fillers the only sort of numbing as anesthesia sort of they don't do anesthesia but they do put numbing cream wherever they do inject from at least from what i've experienced they just, at the injection site at the injection site is where they apply like that numbing cream. You don't really feel the needle going in, but when they do start pumping the filler in, it depends on the area of the face. Uh, around here, I didn't feel anything, but here it was very painful. Um, it only lasted while he was pushing the needle, but um, it wasn't like so painful I was like crying. It was just as he was pushing the needle and you can feel the, the filler filling that area. I did continue doing fillers um, semi-regularly um, in my nose for the next like two years or so. I've always been told they last anywhere between like six months to a year, probably more so a year because as time goes by, obviously fillers go away and dissolve. And I do know that there are fillers that are more permanent, like they last way longer. But the ones I have are kind of just like the regular ones. Also, the types of fillers, don't ask me. I'm not really familiar. I never really asked what type. But so far, I haven't had any problems. But uh, Tony, the guy that I always go to that helps me, is, he tells me that the ones that are coming out these days are much, like the Korean ones are much better quality and the price is kept at a minimum. So I think if you're gonna get them done in Korea, I think that'd be a pretty good idea. 
But yeah, I was doing them about every six or so months. I didn't really need to. You know, a good majority of it does stay in the nose. It's, it's just that really only I'm the one that noticed it going way over time. You do have to be careful because sometimes like mentally you'll start to think like, oh, I need to keep doing it because uh, it doesn't seem as high as before. I almost want to say it might be a good idea to keep a picture of your before nose just so you can compare and remind yourself that there is a, still a difference. Again, it's up to you whether you want to keep doing it or not, but I think you should really only top it off when like I, maybe 90 to 95% of it has like gone down, which would be, I guess, close to maybe a year. If we're talking about the nose at least, again, it depends on each part of the face and what part of the face moves the most. The, like the nose doesn't really move that much. It does tend to last longer. Also the chin, I did get the chin done. Mm, um, I do like the kind of slightly more V shape to my face. So um, I did, I think most of my chin filler might be gone. This is not a mirror. I mean, I'm, I'm still happy with my chin, even if it did dissolve, most of it dissolve, like it's fine. If you do have more of like a flat sort of chin, but you want more of that V shape, um, you can, you'd be surprised at how much of a difference you can make just injecting a little bit in the chin. You really don't need that much as I have learned. <laughs> yeah, again, it depends on the kind of like look that you're into, the aesthetic that you want. So the chin, it's a really, the chin is super quick and easy. So I tend to do this regularly, I guess, maybe like once or twice a year. But again, you have to make sure you do it carefully and sparingly because the balance between i think it's like this sort of ratio like one 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 you don't want to go overboard with the chin because it can make your face look really long i have gotten done under my eyes if you are the type of person that if you use concealer under your eyes but you still notice like dark circles under here that's usually the cause of just like the shape of your eye area like me like i can use so much concealer but um before i had done fillers it would still look like a dark circle because it's just really sunken in in this area. So it creates a, the illusion of a dark circle there. So I don't think I'm going to do it for a while though, because I'm still, I'm still happy with this. I did do a video on that. I'll link that up here along with, you know, if there is a related video, I will link them up here. I was looking tired all the time. And again, I'm skinny. So my face is quite bony and I don't have a lot of face in my, I don't have a lot of face in my fat. I don't have a lot of fat in my face to begin with. So. Yeah, I did get, I tried to hear and I loved it. I even uh, brought my mom to the same place as like a gift, I guess, because uh, it was one of our concerns. Um, I, I look a lot like my mom. We both don't have a lot of fat in our face, but I, uh, we got her fillers here and here and she freaking loved it. So, and she looked really great. She looked a lot more, not necessarily like younger, but like she just looked brighter and more awake. Smile lines uh, right here. I didn't do it too much because it's one of those areas that can look a little weird if you put too much in here, but I did put filler in my uh, smile because, you know, I'm very expressive. Around here and around here, I'm very, very expressive. So I'm only 26. Am I 20? I don't even know if I'm 26. I'm like 26 right now, I think. Okay. It's like between fine lines and wrinkles around my eyes. So um, on my smile lines, I did get it done. If you watch my foundation review, I'll be concerned about whether it creases in this line because that's just an area I'm always having an issue with. So to help kind of alleviate it, not completely get rid of it because I don't mind. Like each and every wrinkle has a story, I guess. <laughs> I think after that, I got my lips done. I never thought I would get my lips done, but for a long, long time in Korea, you know, like the whole trend of like gradient lips, they're supposed to give you the, the illusion of like smaller lips. But then, you know, bigger lips became a trend. I'm not even gonna get into the whole thing about like, you know, oh my God, my freckles are a trend. I used to get bullied. For I'm, let's, I don't wanna talk about that. Generally, I've always thought big lips were really pretty. I just thought I would never get lip fillers on myself. I think a lot of the reason I did get my lip fillers done was because, um, Actually, no, in th it was in third grade when I fell on my face then on the floor. <laughs> Ended up getting really uneven lips. I also wanted to kind of even my lips out because they were not even. So I did, and I didn't really do that much to my lips. Um, they weren't completely different. I don't think they last as long as maybe a nose filler because you do move your lips a lot more, you're talking, and for me, I'm always wiping my lips whenever I do lip swatches, so that kind of agitates and irritates the filler to kind of dissolve a little bit faster. I'm, I don't look at my lips and think, oh, I need to do it again, because I'm still... It wasn't that long ago that I did them. The lips, you kind of have to be a little bit more cautious of. You have to go to someone that does it well, because it's not one of those situations where you literally just, like, stuff the filler into your lips. The doctor has to be very meticulous and kind of, you know, 
precise about where he places the needle. Doctor that I went to, he's very good at it. Because lip fillers in Korea wasn't really a thing for a long time. In America, I feel like it was popping off for a while, but in Korea, it's more so recently. So you kind of have to be careful about the doctor you go to, but the one that I went to is quite good at it. It's one of those ones where you kind of have to be looking in a mirror at the same time. He does it to kind of your specifications, and he kept asking me like, oh, are you happy with it? Are you happy with it? And uh, whenever I needed more, he would do so just a little bit, and we kept doing it until I was happy with it. Oftentimes when you get fillers, for the first few days, it's gonna be the most swollen, but when it's all calmed down and things, you lose about 30-ish percent of the original amount you put in, I think that's around 30%. The lips is one of those areas where it doesn't really do that. You don't lose that much after the initial amount that you put in, maybe like 10%, I think. So it's one of those ones where you can kind of see exactly what you're gonna get while you're doing it, so. And then the most recent one that I did was my cheeks. It's not the last thing I tried because I tried it even before. I guess the biggest insecurity I've always had was my cheeks uh, because they're always like... Ugly ass sunken! No way! Sunken in and I, I don't like that. I want my face to be more plump and voluminous. So cheeks is one that I make sure I try to do as often, not as often as I can, but I try to keep up on it. When I notice that it starts to go down, I think, I think I'm still good. Before I got in them done, I always thought they would just like stick it in here and kind of inject it, but apparently the proper way is to kind of come in actually at the back of the cheek. And again, this is one of the ones where you have to find a good doctor because it's there's a lot of like nerves here that can really fuck your face up if you if they don't do it right. So the doctor I went to is very careful and meticulous about again how he does the filler. So he kind of comes in at the back of the cheek and fills in this area. And I was always like, Ew. What is it gonna do to the cheek if you're putting it at the back here? But it actually creates more of that plump round effect more naturally if it's in here. If it's just here, which is what has happened to me before and I don't recommend it. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Um, it kind of is just like a lump on the side of the cheek. So if you've watched my videos for a while, you know I've had that I had that lump in my cheek. But um, yeah, I, I try to do it here now. And that's originally where I got it done. But that other hospital I went to, no ma'am. I made videos talking about before how I edit my photos, and obviously I'm I'm not ashamed of it. I Photoshop my pictures a little bit or a lot. <laughs> no, not really. I don't really change my face that much. Um, I just kind of clean up the shape and make sure all the bumps are kind of smoothed out. But one thing that I always make sure I do is kind of this bit right here my cheekbone right here is quite big and with this part of my face and this part of my face more sunken in it just makes that bony look more prominent having put the filler in this part of the cheek has really like rounded this part out yeah it just creates a more like rounder shape one benefit to filling in the cheek area is actually you guys know that i have a lot of acne scarring here is it actually plumps it out just a little bit so if you have really uh bad pitted acne scarring, which currently doing this sort of laser thing that it's like the, the newest laser, it's like the new thing uh, for specifically for pitted acne scarring. Um, when I go through all the treatments, I'll let you guys know how that's going. But one benefit of doing the cheek fillers is that it does fill out those pitted acne scars a little bit. With the fact that I have the acne scarring, plus my really bony, no fat face, the pitted acne scarring looked even worse. And But even then, it's still not perfect. But the cheek fillers definitely helped quite a bit, along with giving you a more plump, you know, appearance. This is a very um, vulnerable place. It has really? lots of nerves that comes out. This is the part where it just um, starts, mm -hmm. where all the branches start. Wherever on the, on those dangerous areas, we don't use a sharp needle. It can just do some damage to mm -hmm. the um, important structures on the inside. So we're going to use a camera and, and we'll mm -hmm. just and we're not going to bunch up the um, the filler, but rather just spread along the surface. Okay. All right. Oh my god. Edward's face is a lot more filled now. So one added bonus about this treatment is that 
the skin underneath is now more filled it's in. Way more similar. So the kind of acne scarring that Edward has has dissipated a lot. So your skin generally looks a lot smoother than when you came in. The left and right sides of our faces are not symmetrical. So you have one side of your face that's actually smaller than the other. Mm -hmm. We try to match it with the you know, with the injections, but it's not ever going to be exactly 100%. So that's something people have to accept. Our right and our lefts are not, not equal. Very few people in the world have exactly equal faces, mm -hmm. almost nobody. So even after you do this treatment, it'll be as balanced as possible, but you can't get 100% perfection, so don't expect that. Now, with that being said, if you're thinking about getting fillers, like I said at the beginning of the video, make sure you do it like, what's, what's the word I want to use? Sparingly? Like, too much of a good thing is never a good thing. I as well have to be very careful, especially if I'm doing my cheeks, because if I put too much, it, it literally stretches your skin out. So you're gonna have to keep getting them because once the skin is stretched out, but then the filler disappears, you can get sagginess. So that's why I make sure I don't ever go overboard with it. That's why if you do get fillers and you're thinking about uh, like touching them up, make sure you take a good look at yourself in the mirror. Make sure that it's completely disappeared because if it's only been like a few months and you're already thinking, oh my God, I need to top up on my fillers again. You might want to look at maybe a before picture because you might just end up adding, adding too much. And a lot of times the doctors in Korea, at least the ones that I've been to, they will tell you like whether you need it or not. Because there have been times where I'll go to a doctor that I've been to before and I'll be like, oh, I want to do a little bit more of my nose again. And they'll be like, no, you already, like, it looks fine still. So, so I guess that's a good thing about Korean doctors. I'm not saying that every doctor anywhere in the world is the kind that will be like, oh, you know, whatever you want to do, we'll do. I personally think that a good doctor is the one that will tell you what he thinks you need and tells you you don't need something if, you know, if he thinks it's too much. My friend Tony, the one that I've always been going to, uh, he, he has this company called Soul Guide Medical. So if you ever need anything related to um, injectables, plastic surgery, um, or not even just stuff like that, but uh, anything like maybe you're a dentist or just a doctor in general, or even like hairline surgery, I'm thinking about getting that because honey, her forehead, <laughs> no ma'am. He speaks English, he's Canadian, really great help. He's really nice as well, uh, and he's really cute. <laughs> I'll leave his information down below if you are ever curious. I think it's really funny that whenever I meet subscribers, it's like 99% of the time, if it's a girl, I'll be like, oh my god, I love your videos, you're so funny. Uh, I watch your videos all the time, love your makeup. But the guys that I've met, I, like, and it's not a bad thing, I just think it's kind of interesting. It's either my girlfriend watches you, or it's a guy that's interested in my plastic surgery videos. So I thought that was really interesting. But yeah, his information will be down below. Hope you found the video helpful. Uh, man, I'll see you in the next one. All the Ryan say goodbye as well. Bye, yo. Seoul is the capital of plastic surgery, skin, dental, vision correction, and other medical treatments. Seoul Guide Medical is here to find you the best doctors, the best procedures, and take care of you from start to finish. Contact us at consult at soulguidemedical.com for a free consultation with our specialists. Let us take care of everything and create a customized treatment plan that is right for you. We help you with airport pickup, accommodations, in-clinic translations, aftercare, and hold your hand every step of the way. Visit our website at soulguidemedical.com for more information. Soul Guide Medical. Happy patients, always.